I'm Alistair Seren. I'm a freshwater ecologist at NIWA. NIWA has been funded by the Animal Health Board to examine what happens to Tanati when it leaches from baits and goes into the soil. We're here in Wallaby Creek in the Marfair Estate Forest up the Grey Valley on the west coast where we're doing our experiments. We chose this site because it's a nice forested site. It's got a steep catchment, you've got a stream down there. We know that Tanati is soluble and it leaches out from a pellet. We want to see how much leaches out from the pellet and flows over the soil versus how much leaches from the pellet and flows into the soil and then moves downhill towards the stream as part of the soil water. So the first thing we do when we get to the experimental site is we apply rainfall for 30 minutes just to make sure the soil is saturated and nice and damp. So what we're doing is we're applying the 1080. We're also applying different sorts of baits. We're doing a test to see whether nitrogen and salt has the same movement pattern as 1080. We're just trying to spread them out as much as possible to get them exposed to as much rainfall as we can. So here we have a whole bunch of soil moisture tubes, they're called lysimeters. We've got them deployed shallow and deep ones to sample the different sorts of soil water at different depths in the soil. These, these work like a bike pump in reverse. This is our fourth day. We use two bait types. There's RS5, which is what they're using at the moment over here. And the RS5 isn't particularly waterproof, so it breaks down very quickly. And the other bait we use is Wanganui number no. 7, and that's got a water repellent coat on it, so it lasts a lot longer. So here we have the rainfall simulator going. It's coming out and it oscillates from side to side. It gives about 15 millimetres an hour. We have a small rain gauge there that's just going to quantify how much rain we're applying and that's running all the time. So everything seems to be working well. We've got the rainfall hitting the baits. We'll come back in two hours and sample the water. Well, there's some work which we need to do in the lab but we have to leave the laboratory at some stage and step out into the real world because, let's face it, that's where they drop 1080. They don't drop it in the lab. So we're doing this small-scale experiment here in the field to simulate as close as we can the natural situation. So now it's the time to collect the soil samples. So we just insert the tube and then we can withdraw any soil water and you can see it coming in the syringe and what we're doing is seeing how much of this contains the 1080. So that one had 16 mils and that's from the shallow lysimeter. This water in the syringe is all the rainwater which has hit the baits, gone into the soil and is flowing downhill. Now we're collecting the surface runoff which flows down the plots, flows through these tubes and into the beakers and we simply pour that into our bottle. So that's the overland flow sample for two hours. Now we're basically repeating it for four hours, eight hours and twelve hours to get the big picture of what's happening here. So here we have the samples. Let me put them in our chili bin on ice to keep them nice and preserved. And then these samples are off to the lab in Christchurch for analysis. My name is Matt Campion, I'm a uh, technician at Lancare Research in the uh, toxicology lab here and uh, we're currently working on some uh, water samples from Niwa, analysing them for uh, 1080. We have our uh, 50 mils of sample uh, to which we uh, then add uh, various reagents in order to, um, to, to carry out the reaction. So it's, it's called uh, DCC dicycloxylcarbodiimide. Two mils of dichloroaniline. Essentially they'll, they'll react with um, react with the 1080 to form like a volatile compound. So now it uh, goes onto the shaker for one hour. It, uh, we remove it from the shaker um, and then we basically go through a series of clean up steps and finally um, we end up with sample vial which goes to the GC and it's uh, ready for to be run. This is um, a gas chromatograph, Essentially, basically it's a, a fancy oven with a, a column in it which will allow the separation of different compounds then we can uh, determine how much of a given compound is in that sample 
with respect to a standard. It will just repeat this whole process until it's run through all of the samples. And the size of the peak corresponds to how much 1080 is in the sample. These are the results that will go to the uh, needle scientists. I've just done the calculations now. Okay. It's really interesting. Most of the 1080 appears to be just going into the soil. I've done the field work component and I have a hydrology colleague, MS, who does all the work to model what happens when the rain falls on the soil. The results have been very interesting actually. The first thing we, we found was the amount of 1080 that leaches from baits is actually independent of how much rainfall that falls. And it doesn't matter how intense that rainfall is, the 1080 leaches from the baits at a similar rate. So that was the first question. Second question was what happens to the, the water once it's hit the bait? Does it flow overland into the stream or does it go into the soil? We were expecting quite a large amount of the water that we, we rained on, on, the, on the baits to uh, simply flow overland. What we found, however, was despite our expectations, the vast majority, like 99.9% .9 of the water, went straight into the ground and only about 0.1% of the water actually flows overland into the streams. So that was a surprising result. We were expecting to get a movement of 1080 from the close lysimeters to the far ones and get a peak as the 1080 moved down the hill in the soil water. And we didn't really find that. Most of the soil water that, w that had the 1080 in it seemed to go straight down into the, into the soil water and there wasn't much lateral transport. And the third thing we found was that the amount of 1080 that actually goes into the soil water, very little is actually going overland or, 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 or moving laterally. We put 100 baits in a tiny area. The concentration we found in the soil water was 82 micrograms a litre. Now that's quite a bit, but that's from 100 baits, and so if you just divide 82 by 100 to get the amount that would come from one bait, that's 0.82 micrograms a litre. Now the Ministry of Health guidelines for drinking water is 3.5 micrograms, we're at 0.8, so we are well below the Ministry of Health guidelines. It looks like the effects of 1080 leaching from the baits entering the soil, uh, in, into the soil water, is highly, highly unlikely to have any um, adverse effects on, on water quality of, of streams running through that catchment. The next step is go and replicate this experiment at many different places to get more confidence in our numbers. And if they all come back to say the same thing, the possibility of 1080 contaminating surface water and groundwater is very little.